Welcome. This is a demo on how to use the Subversive plugin to Eclipse, a specific reference to using it with an Android project. So in front of me I've got the Android uh, and, uh, development tools open, uh, which is the Eclipse environment, and we can see here that I've already created a project called SVN Demo. It's just a standard run-of-the-mill uh, Hello World project that the tools will create for me. So what I've got is I've got the full directory structure, source, gen, all the libraries, and so forth. And what I want to do is I want to work with a repository. So a repository is used for working with other developers or yourself to share files, to maintain history of those files, and to, main, to control the changes, known as a source code control system. So we're going to look at how we can, first off, ensure that Subversive is installed. We're then going to look at how we can add a repository to our system. Uh, one that has already been created on a server, but just add it so our assist client can access it. We'll then share our project, edit, check in, and update files, as well as we'll see how we can check out an existing project. So that should be the uh, introduction to using Subversive. So first, let's make sure it's installed. So we can go to Help, Install New Software, as we do for all uh, Eclipse plugins. And then from the list, I want to select whatever version of Eclipse I'm using. So the one I'm using is Juno, so I'll select the Juno Update site. And then in here, I can type in Subversive. And Eclipse will then take a minute to actually figure out, uh, searching the listing of all possible versions. And we see here that the one I want is Subversive SVN Team Provider. And it's already installed on my version. If it's not installed for you, if the icon looks uh, like the others above it and below it, put a check mark in this box and then go through and finish installing it. I'll cancel this because I've already got it set up. The first thing I want to do is I want to be able to add the repository to work with. A great way to do that is if you go to uh, Window and then Show View, we want to look for the SVN Repositories view. It's not listed here, so I'll go to Other, and then under the SVN folder, we can see which is halfway down, I want to select SVN Repositories. And that's going to pop up somewhere on your screen, probably booked, uh, docked on the bottom uh, in one of the little windows. I've dragged it up here to the left just so it's uh, kind of sharing some space with my package explorer. And we can see here. Now, initially you're not going to have anything here, um, so you're going to have to add in a new um, repository. So what you want to do is you want to go to the top menu here, New Repository Location. And then in this box, you want to type in whatever the repository location is you're dealing with. This may be provided to you by an instructor or may be provided to you uh, by some server. So I'll type in the uh, URL that I want to use, and then you'll type in your username and password here. I've already entered that, so when you click Finish, it should enter. So on the left-hand side, you'll see your repository that you've created. When you initially open it up, you won't find anything in it. Now, for me, I happen to have already added some uh, contents to it. Oh, I think I'm working on the wrong one. Let me go back and add that. I'll save the uh, authentication here. And we can see that it's actually popped up here. Now I'll get the one that I was looking for. We can see I've already added a few projects to this uh, repository, but perhaps initially you'll see that you'll not have any of these uh, items. And that's all right. We'll see how we can add those later. So in fact, let's do that now. So I'm going to go back to my Project Explorer, and I'm going to share this SVN demo project with SVN. So what I do is I right-click on it, and down here near the bottom, here just on the screen here, there's a team and there's a share project option, unfortunately just off the screen. Now I can select which one of the repositories I've already got listed here, and this is the one I want, this top one I just created, so I'm going to use an existing repository location. So I can click Next, I can describe how I want to share it, and so forth. One thing I will give you a heads up is some SVN servers do not work well with a space in the path name. So you want to make sure you name your projects as well as all your files in your project without any spaces. Android's pretty good with that. It tends to enforce that for most files. If you add, for example, a document to a docs folder or something like that, you may find you cannot check it in if there's a space in the file name. So I can click Next. Uh, it's going to share it in the comment, so I'll click Finish. And it's going through now and actually checking in this project. 
It should give me an opportunity here to describe what it is I'm checking in, as well as select what files I want to check in. So I might put in here, initial check-in. You always want to give a reasonable explanation for everything you do with SVN. Now one other thing I want to do is I don't want to check in any of my bin folders or my gen folder. So here we see the gen folder and then the bin folder down here on the left. These are automatically generated folders. The bin folder contains all the class files when you compile your Java code. If you check this in, it's going to first all take up time and space to transmit. Plus, if you're working with somebody else or a different repos or work, um, working copy, every time you check in, you're going to have conflicts you can't merge because you cannot merge the binary files. So what I want to do is I'm going to right click on this and then I'm going to say add to the SVN ignore. And I'm going to say I want to add the, uh, the bin and it will get rid of the bin. You may find that this window disappears behind the other. If you click on this again, it comes back up to the foreground. Other things you can just, uh, ignore. I'm going to ignore the gen folder. It's a really small folder. I don't really have to, but it's automatically generated, so I just don't want it there. Otherwise, I can look through this list quite quickly to see if there's anything I don't want to check in. Uh, if you've got large compiled files, maybe you don't want to do that. It's fine to check in Word documents or images. Um, just be aware that it becomes harder to merge those if you have conflicts. So I'll click OK. And now it's going to take a minute as it transmits all of my data to the server. Now when SVN is working, it's only going to transmit the differences. Of course, your first check-in is fairly large. It's going to transmit all the information. But later work, when you do an update or a commit, it doesn't transmit the whole thing. It simply computes how much information needs to be transmitted based on what it last transmitted. So here, of course, the Android jar file, for example, is larger than, uh, you know, it's not very small, so it does take a while to transmit some of these images um, and zip files. Okay, so now we've got it checked in. We can see a few changes here on the left. First, we can see here the f numbers are sitting after each one of these files that I checked in. These are the different uh, the version number in my SVN repository. Your repository will give you different version numbers. Don't worry too much about the numbers. It simply indicates what's the latest version that you have or you're working on. You can also see that there's a little kind of cylinder in the bottom right-hand corner of most of my icons here. It's pretty small, but it's there. That indicates that I'm working with a project that's under SVN. So let's go ahead and change a file. I'll change this uh, Java file, which happens to be my main activity.java, and I can put something in here. So let's add a log message. So log dot, and then I'm going to say um, info log.i, give it a tag, so svn demo, and then a message. This is my first change. Save the file. Now, I've just made a change here. We can see my file. I've added this, but we haven't actually changed it in the repository yet. I'm going to go back to my repository view. I'm going to check here, and I don't actually have my SVN thing. So I'm going to refresh. Oops, I think I want to click on this top one and then click refresh, but it's currently doing the middle one. Yeah. It's going to refresh what I clicked on. And we can see here my SVN demo is what I just created. I'll expand that. We'll find under here my source file, source folder, pardon me. Source. Under here I'll find my activity. Very deep. This is showing me files, not necessarily the Eclipse view of my project. So this is the actual files sitting on the repository. Be careful you differentiate between the file that you have on the repository and the file in your working copy. One's on the remote server, one's local. So I'm now opening the remote file. We can see up here at the top, it tells me this rev head. This kind of is my indication that it's on the server. And we can see that there's no log message in here. Why? because I've not yet committed the change. The change exists only on my local copy. So I'm going to close this for a moment. We see here my changed version. I'm going to go back to my Project Explorer. And one other thing I want to highlight, you'll note the greater than symbol here in front of the name of the file. It's propagated up all the way up through parents to the main project of, uh, that I'm working in. This indicates that the file has been changed or this up here indicates that something in my project has been changed. So what I'll often want to do is commit that once I've got a change completed. 
So now let's go ahead and commit it to the server. So I'm going to go down here to the team, and then up here to the top to commit. I'm going to commit this to the server. I'm going to give it a meaningful description, so added a log message to on create. And we can see here all the files that are going to get committed. I want to make sure I'm never committing my bin folder. So if you see it's being committed, go ahead and change that to ignore. But here we're fine. I'll click OK. It's going to work very quickly because all it has to do is compute the difference and then send that one little tiny bit of difference. Let's go and check that it actually worked. So I'll come back here. I'll refresh. And now this should be uh, 45. Double click on it. We'll see that we're working on the head. And it now has the log message in it. Again, I'm going to close it because I don't want to get confused as to which file I'm working on. That is a big problem if you've got multiple versions sitting around. Okay, so now we've done that commit. Another thing you're going to want to do very often is update. So again, I'm going to right click on this, go down to Team, and then I'm going to update. And that's going to update my project here. We see that the only change was that it pulled, it changed these version numbers saying, well, we've propagated the version number up. It's version 45, which is the head. Oftentimes what will happen is other team members will have made changes. You will pull down those changes by doing an update. So you want to update quite frequently, and you want to check in as often as possible. Okay, so now we've got this one project in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check out another project. So imagine that your teammate has already created the project, and you want to gain access to it. So I'm going to go to my SVN repositories tab here. Again, let's refresh it, so I'll click on this root refresh. It's going to show me all the projects that are here. Now, you can select one of these, right click, which I mean, you can right click and it will then allow you to check it out. I prefer to actually go to the root, say find checkout as, and I'm going to let Eclipse search the repository to find any projects. So I'm going to find projects in the children of the selected resource. So I've selected the top, and I'm going to find the children of projects. This is kind of nice because it actually looks for projects, and it looks for them recursively through directories. So if you've got a directory structure here, maybe you've buried some projects lower down in the tree, uh, this will still find them, and it's going to give you the full project, rather than maybe just a folder that doesn't want to be treated in, e in Eclipse like a project. So we can see here it's going through and detecting all of the different projects that I have in my uh, repository. I'll then be given the option to select what I want. So let's select actually, let's select the one that we're working on, this SVN demo. Let's imagine we didn't have it already checked out. So I'll click Next. I'm going to check it out into the workspace, and it's going to go into the appropriate working set. Now I could, if I wanted to, I could change uh, where it's going to go. So I'll click Finish here. Uh, the project already exists in the workspace and the data folder. So I could overwrite it. Of course, I don't actually want to overwrite, so I'll cancel this. You can, if you like, um, check out projects as a different name. Um, so if I were to be, let me go back one moment. If I clicked on, for example, just this SVN demo, I click Find Checkout As, it'll give me the same menu. Except now, because I selected this, I can say I want to check it out as a specific name. And let's give it a new name. So let's call it uh, second. Let me get the second copy. It's going to check it out into my project. And so now I can see I got the SVN demo, and I've got SVN demo second. So I have two copies in my working in my um, workspace. This isn't usually a good idea. It kind of makes sense for a demo here. Uh, I'll show it next uh, video on how to actually use these two projects to do a uh, uh, some sort of check-in and merge conflicts. Uh, so that's it. What have we seen? Well, we've seen how to ensure that we have uh, Subversive installed. We've seen how to add a repository and using the SVN repositories view to manipulate those repositories. We were able to share a project that we had written. We were also able to check out a project that somebody else had created. We were able to edit a file and check in the change, as well as perform an update, which would work quite nicely if somebody else were changing the files for us. Uh, so, uh, have a look for other tutorials that will guide through uh, more advanced topics with use of SVN.